Thank you for joining me today. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer and I am starting a brand new series. This is the first episode. That series is called Pet Grooming Untold Stories. Untold Stories of Pet Grooming. What happens in this room right here in my pet salon? The bonds that I share with the pets that I groom. The things that the pets that I groom and me as a groomer experience it's always something different every dog every day sometimes it's just the littlest thing that really resonates with me and these are things that I want to share with you guys that I experience as a professional pet groomer I have such a library of tips and tricks which I share on my channel I have lots of videos and we have a weekly live stream that we do that has really really proven to be successful in sharing the secrets of the pet grooming industry but this series is a little different as a groomer there's a lot of um, you know your work goes home with you quite often meaning it's different than just doing a job and saying I have to do a B and C and then I get D as a result Pet grooming is like that, but at the same time, there's so many hurdles and obstacles that we have to jump over and jump through to make it a successful grooming experience for the pets, for the owners, and for the groomer. We are a team, the pet owner, the groomer, and the pet especially. We work for that pet. The, the pet is the goal, what is best for the pet, and it is definitely my job and my pleasure as a professional pet groomer to share secrets with you guys so that you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home. As a professional groomer, I am so dedicated to the pet, to the care of their skin and coat. That is my first concern. When clients bring their dogs to me and they, they come walking through the door, in the client's mind, my dog's gonna be beautiful today. He's gonna get a haircut and he needs one. He's very overgrown or, or whatever. But here's the thing. When they come back here, me and the dog, when we get back into the shop and I'm looking at this dog, my first concern is I wanna rejuvenate his skin and coat. That's what I want to do first. There are many, many approaches to that depending on the breed. That is the first thing that I'm worried about is the condition of the dog's skin because the dog's skin is the largest organ in their body and it's very important that we look at that and take care of that first. The rest is cosmetic. All the grooming, the haircut, the fancy frou-frou, the good smell good, that's all just icing on the cake, but we've got to take care of the skin and coat. Today's the first episode of Pet Grooming Untold Stories. I can't wait to share with you the story of Darcy. Darcy is a little dachshund mix. She came to me about four years ago, only for nails. They only want me to trim her nails and that's fine. I have a lot of clients that, that only come in for nails. And I said, sure, I love doing nails. Actually, I do love <laughs> trimming dog nails. I don't know why, I'm not normal. I get it, but I like it. So I was like, okay, and they said, listen, but before we bring her to you, cause I hadn't worked with her yet, and this was on the phone. They said, we gotta tell you, she's crazy when she goes to get her nails trimmed. It's, it's, it's like she becomes another dog. And I'm thinking, okay, dachshund mix, that makes sense. Dachshunds do not care to have their feet touched, especially their nails trimmed. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, I work with lots of dachshunds and it's, it, okay, we usually work through it. So it's still, I'm looking at this like, okay, sounds good, whatever, just bring her in. You know, I know I can get through this. You know, I know we'll be fine. I, I typically have a lot of success with dogs that are deathly afraid of having their nails trimmed. So I looked at this challenge and thought, good, I love that, I love a challenge. Bring her in. I want to meet Darcy. So, and there's a retired couple, very nice people. They live right here in town where I live. And um, they came in with Darcy and Darcy's just bouncing off the wall. She's full of energy. She's a very happy dog. She's, um, she, she's so excitable, she whines. 
you know, oh, when know. you're talking to her, just, hi, how are you, Darcy? You know, she's so excitable. And I'm th and that right there is something that, that does make it hard to work with if you're talking about trimming a dog's nails, especially if uh, they're, they're a little apprehensive about it at the same time. And she's excitable. I'm like, okay. So I could see her energy level, um, but she was very loving, very happy. And I thought, okay, the biggest challenge here is going to be getting Darcy to calm down on the grooming table so I can work with her. I need her to be still. It's very important. I need her to hold still so I can trim those nails. As I certainly do not want to cut the quick of a dog's nail. It happens sometimes that I cut into the quick a little bit. I use quick stop to stop that bleeding. Most of the time, that's not an issue. I don't, you know, typically nick a dog's nails. So I'm not worried about that, but I am worried when I'm looking at Darcy. I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> she's got energy. So I'm trying to channel my energy down. You know, I'm trying to, to get myself in a good place for Darcy when I get her up on my table. Plus she doesn't know me. I don't have a trust. I don't have a bond with her yet. That's another challenge because once you establish that trust and bond with a, a pet client even, not just your own dog, with a pet client, then things go differently. So I say my hellos and my greetings, meet and greet and all that stuff with um, Darcy in the waiting area and with her parents. And um, I'm already thinking this is gonna be a challenge. I actually had a plumber working in here on one of my hoses, my water hoses, at the time and uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking hey a dog's coming in for nails five minutes in and out no big deal so I, I wasn't worried but then when I met Darcy I was I thought oh god she needs absolutely no distractions you know this dog is gonna be so highly distracted so I bring her in she's stiff as a board she's just that kind of dog anyway she's very stiff like when you pick her up some dogs don't enjoy to be held even if they're very loving sweet dogs I don't like to be held she's stiff as a board I bring her in I set her up on the table and I put her in a grooming loop and I hook her to my uh, to my groomer helper you know so she stays here at the grooming bar and she can't spin and dance on the table just typical the way that I groom dogs or especially trim nails and I get Darcy situated on the table and she's just <laughs> her energy level is just way up so I'm trying to calm her down and just talk to her for a few minutes before I even attempted to, to trim her nails mom and dad explained to me that she does not like her nails trimmed and that nobody can do it so <laughs> I'm talking to her and she likes me. I can tell it, you know, she's, she's, she likes me very much. And I pick up the nail trimmer and right away she's, she's scared to death. And I'm assuming, I don't know, did, did somebody, you know, trim her nail too short at one point and she never forgot it or does she just not like having her nails touched? It could be either way. So I'm still thinking we'll get through this. She totally lost her mind on the table. I, I didn't think that we would ever <laughs> get anywhere. I can't believe the dog that I see today in Darcy when she comes in for her nails. And I'm about ready to show you that. You're, you're just gonna be blown away. She was completely doing an alligator roll in the grooming loop with the groomer helper attached to this grooming arm. She was spinning 360s on the table. And I'm just standing there. The plumber guy's like, oh my God, lady, you don't make enough money for this. And I'm like, yeah, I know. You know, this isn't normal. This isn't typical. So I, I, I just kept talking to her. Finally, I had to ask the plumber guy, can you step out a second? I just felt like she, she couldn't handle any distractions. It was enough for her to try to deal with this. And she did this. That poor dog was so wore out. She was wearing herself out. And I kept thinking, maybe she'll just give in you know and then at the same time i'm thinking i don't think i ever would like this dog to be back on my grooming table i don't need this kind of stress but she clearly does need her nails trimmed they were very long basically wore herself out and eventually 
I was able to trim her nails. She was not happy about it. She was shaking like a leaf. She was doing this with her paw the whole time, which makes it extremely hard to trim their nails because when they're moving constantly, you could easily cut the quick. And I don't want that to happen, especially for a dog that's petrified of having her nails trimmed. If I cut her quick, she is never gonna forget that. And she's never gonna wanna walk through my door again. And I did not want that to happen. So it was very stressful because I'm trying to get through this. Her paw is back and forth. And the worst thing you wanna do is play tug of war with a dog's foot when you're trying to groom their nails, trim their nails, because it, that tells them you're fighting with them over it. You want them to submit to it. You want them to work for you. And I just couldn't see that happening with Darcy. I did get the nails trimmed the first time and I brought Darcy back out to their owners and I said it did not go well and they could hear what was going on and they felt bad and it took me about 15 minutes and I said I'm not sure that you know we'll ever have success um, you know I said I did not enjoy that experience and she did not enjoy it. And I do not like to work with dogs and feel like I'm forcing them to do something. You know, it's totally against their will, you know, totally against their will. I don't like to work with dogs in that situation. If I can't work with a dog and we can't have some type of mutual respect and, and compliancy between us, I do not, Put that dog back on my schedule i'll try it a couple times and that's it because it's not good for the dog and it's not good for me and you know maybe my patient's level is different than another groomer's maybe another groomer would have a a better time with a certain dog you know than i would finding the right groomer for your pet is very important and stick with that groomer because they're going to bond together at least they should. So the owners and I agreed to give it another try in about six weeks. That time went slightly better, not much better. I found a trick with Darcy. It took me several times of working with her to find a trick to get through trimming these nails that she was absolutely okay with it. You know, I didn't have to make her feel like I was forcing her. And I'm gonna share that trick with you today while I'm trimming Darcy's nails. Now it's been about four years I've been working with her. She's in and out of here in about three minutes. Done, done deal. She loves me to death. She comes in so happy to see me. This is Darcy's story. No one could trim Darcy's nails, but the first day I worked with her, she taught me a secret. Today I'm sharing that secret with you, Darcy's secret. Say I am a good girl. You've come a long way. You sure have. You've come a long way with these nails. Are you ready? Do you want to start with the back nails? Do you want to start with the back nails? Okay, can we turn this way? This way? Right here. Right here, this is Darcy's secret. She needed me to quietly and gently whisper in her space that we were in this together. And that she had nothing to fear of that clipper because I had her back. I would protect her. All dogs are different, but this is what Darcy needed. Darcy needed reassurance from me. She trusted me, but she was afraid of those clippers. How do I know this? I know this because the moment I would back out of Darcy's space and take my hands off of her, she would tense up and start to whine and dance on the table. And when I would re-enter her space and gently put my hands on her and whisper she was going to be okay, I could feel her little body relax. That looks beautiful. We gotta turn around and do the other side. Come on, turn around. Ooh. Oh, I know. Well, honey, you have four feet. You do, you really do. You have four feet. Yes. You want me to look at this from underneath? 
You gonna make me work hard today, honey? Now look at this. Look at her ear. I she know. wants to move out of this situation so badly, but she's trying so hard for me that she chooses to only move her ear. She's willingly allowing me to work with her nails, her feet, which is something she is really terrified of. You can see there, she's flinching a little, but I'm close to her, I'm gentle, I'm quiet, and I'm just giving her all the reassurance that she needs to hold still and trust me. Darcy, I could never thank you enough for sharing your secret with me that day because you have allowed me to help so many, many other dogs work through this. And we're all done. Just like you and I did that day. I know. Isn't that wonderful how you did so good? <laughs>If you've enjoyed the first episode of Pet Grooming Untold Stories, stay tuned. I'm going to link the playlist in the end card right now. So every time I upload an episode of Pet Grooming Untold Stories, it will be in the end card of each video.